Hi guys, welcome back. This is Map Chat episode 222, featuring the second installment of my interview with Seth Robinson. This part of the interview, we focus in on his most famous creation, the Legend of the Red Dragon BBS door game. After that, we talk about his game Planets, as well as the sequel to Legend of the Red Dragon, Lord 2. A lot of great stuff here, so without further ado, here is Mr. Seth Robinson. I'm coming back to you know to Lord for a minute. Uh, so you it started off very simply with just a sort of very basic mechanic, and then I guess as it as people logged in and you saw you had sort of you know something that was there, you started to add on uh, new components to it over time. Exactly, exactly. There was no plan um, t in the beginning, so I just added on pieces, and then the fighting part turned it into a real game, and the turns per day, and over the next. Mm, yeah, seven years. Just kept adding piece by piece. And I, I think I was about uh, it, a year, may, maybe not a year, but I'd been running it for a while. And that's when people started saying, hey, this is pretty good. Can I get it for my BBS? And then I started thinking about, mm, maybe I could turn this into some money or something. But it really, there was no concept to sell it. That's not why it was written at all. It was just to get people to go to my BBS because I got like four calls a day. It's just pathetic. <laughs> you know, that's, it was horrible. So I started to sell it for Tag Amiga BBS software. Specifically, it only ran on that one stupid thing. And uh, I, I advertised it on the main BBS of Tag, which was over in some, you know, some other state. And then I got banned. I actually got banned from that BBS because um, I gave. This is really horrible and embarrassing, but it's long enough. Enough time has passed. I can tell you the untold story. <laughs> I I gave a copy of my tag BBS software to someone else to look at, which I shouldn't have. Piracy, and he. He's an idiot. He called the main headquarters and asked for support and said, Seth gave me the software. He didn't understand that it wasn't, you know, I, I paid for it. You're not supposed to give it away. Um, anyway, so I got banned. So I couldn't even advertise Lord anymore. My bad. It's my fault. But my friend is still an idiot, whoever that guy was. I forgot. So when did you put in the in-game modules? After the PC port, um, it started to take off. It got a lot more popular. And that's when the idea for that came to allow people to write their own pieces of it. You know, I'm, I'm, I don't actually know where that came from. Did I steal that from another game? Was another game doing that? Where did that come from? I really don't remember. Well, maybe we should back up a little bit. When did you do the PC port? PC port uh, came about probably maybe a year later after the Amiga version. And I did not have a PC. So I, I love to tell this story to kids today who complain how hard it is to make games or whatever. This is my old man story. I did not have my own PC. So I had to go to my friend's house after work, I think I was uh, 16 or 17, and I was working cement. Horrible business of carrying wheelbarrows of cement up and down like ramps. And my hands would be like, I could barely even do this because from holding the wheelbarrow. But I, after work, I would go to my friend's house, use his 386 to work on Lord. Uh, and the deal was they would get a uh, percent for letting me use their computer. And I guess I even started selling it before I had my own PC and I, because I bought my first PC, uh, 386DX40, faster than my friends. Uh, you bought that with the money I bought, that you were yes. making from a... Exactly. So you so, knew you had a hit on your hands at this point. Uh, to me, yeah, to me it was a, a huge deal because I had made like, you know, $600 or something. But... Later, uh, yeah, very quickly, um, through word of mouth, BBSs are the perfect way to spread something like that because all the players play it, 
and then go yell at other systems. Where's this game? If they like the game. So that really helped a lot. It spread fast. And at the, at the height of it, yeah, I was, I was getting like, um, about like 500 bucks a day in, in registrations and they would all come by mail. So my parents, you know, getting all these checks and letters in the mailbox, what are you doing, son? And then, (laughs) and then they actually heard about the game through their friend's kid or something. And who told them about the Violet to the barmaid and some of those options. So my parents were not happy about that at all. They, they were ashamed. They're like, we, why are you doing this? It's not edifying to the Lord. And so, yeah, they weren't, they weren't very happy. I moved out as quick as I could. I love them. I love them though. It's kind of fun that the acronym turned out to be Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Is that just coincidence or is that a little, a little jab at the, um, it wasn't me. It wasn't my idea to make that acronym. I, my friend I, Jay Wilkes, I think, just randomly came up with that, and I, I said, "That doesn't make sense. You you left out the T. It should be loadered." He's like, "No, man, just forget the T. Forget the T." He was he kind of was a smoker. He's like, "Forget the T, man." So I did. Now coming back to these uh, in-game modules, do you have a you ever played those uh, modules from other people? Do you have any favorites? I. I played them, but I, I think I never ran them, except my own. I, I wrote one or two of my own, Barrick's House and some others. But I found that they were too, usually they were too crazy and messed up the balance of the game. And I know there are exceptions, but a lot of them didn't check ranges. And you'd go into there and it would, you'd come back and you'd have negative 2 billion gold and all kinds of things caused problems. So... To keep my BBS running safely, I didn't. Um, but I know that they really help the popularity of the game. So I've, I'm very appreciative of the work done. How many were there? I, I'm wondering. I don't even know. More than 200, though, I think. Yeah, it's my understanding people are still making some today. Really? No, I, I didn't know that. <laughs> Diehards in the BBS scene. Yeah, I, saw, I was reading some of the earlier interviews people had done with you and uh, one of them you had said that I guess people were fabricating all these really complex uh, sort of esoterica about the game. You know, if you log in or if you play at 2 a.m. on certain days of the week, even days or odd days, and you do this and that, you know, you get further with the, uh, you know, with Violet and so on. Is, uh, right. I just kind of, I mean, you said you didn't actually have any of that sort of uh, code in there, but I'm just sort of wondering what's your theory as to why some, you know, people cooked up those sort of elaborate schemes. Yeah, um, I guess it's it's human nature, Um, you know that. Do you know what is that study with the birds who would move their heads weird, and when a you pushed a button and food a pellet came in, they would they would get these superstitions, and I think we humans get the same superstitions. If something happens even twice, we ignore all the times it doesn't, and superstitions grew very quickly how to get this and that to happen. And I would, I would try to shoot down those rumors. Yeah, I would, I would write messages. No, no, that's not, that's not true. Don't say that. But I see that happen over and over, even today. Um, same thing, rumors spread so quickly with no verification at all. And no, no one will scientifically test them. Go, okay, let's test this. Let's write, you know, let's write a chart. Everyone's nine years old or whatever. They didn't care. They just, it's fun to share that kind of story but no none of that was ever true it's kind of funny to think of uh, something like lord almost as being a psychological experiment i mean you got all the <laughs> pieces in place right people coming in you can watch you know watch what they do uh i guess i was kind of curious about this uh, do you notice that people were playing the game more to socialize with other, other players or do they or were they just really drawn into the game mechanics i think it was a mix I think that the mechanics alone were okay. Um, and I think that the, the polished layer of the social interaction is what made Lord stand out from some of the other games like it, especially the support for female players, which at that time was pretty rare. And I was very careful to always give females the same options that the males had. So they had someone else to flirt with. And 
Namely you, right? Well, yes, <laughs> naturally. I was a child. I, you act crazy. Uh, but especially what was different about that game is that male players could flirt with female players. Well, and male players could flirt with male players. Whatever, there was nothing to stop you from doing what you wanted to do. And most games, at best, you could kill another real player. But flirting, I think, was new. And also the stories, the little tiny stories that were done in little text sequences that gave you a choice. Over and over, I tried to pepper the game with those. Those added on top of the mechanics, I think, is what made Lord Fun made the best that it could do of, of such a limited um, environment with just the color, you know, ANSI graphics. You couldn't do that much. Yeah, I noticed uh, later you had a, was it a RIP term? A RIP, RIP terminal right. version? RIP right. graphics, I forget what, the, what that was called exactly. But It yeah. never, it never <laughs> really took off. Yeah, I don't know if you ever used RIP term, but... It was kind of like a really early idea of Flash, but could only draw these vector shapes for the most part. And it limiting it to one mediocre terminal program or client, like one, only one or two even supported it. Yeah, it was dead in the water. Early kind of pseudo HTML idea. Nope. Good try, though, but nope. But yeah, Lord supported it. Uh, for the three people who whoever used it, <laughs> yeah, it seems like it's. I seems like I finally got that working on a computer one time, and then uh, it's just a like, big pain. Right, I don't like the concept though. All right, so in 1992, that's when we get Legend of the Red Dragon 2: New World, and I was going to ask if you could clarify some things. I was reading about this game, so it seems like you were going to do a different game, completely different game called New World, and somehow. I don't know, so it fell apart for some reason. And then you just uh, use that new world to be the subtitle of Lord 2? Right, right. Um, I, after Lord, I did a space door game, Planets, the Exploration of Space. And then after that, I said, okay, I want to, I love space. I'm going to, tired of that medieval stuff. I'm going to do New World. You, you're a settler on a new planet, and you get these news reports every day. And eventually Earth is, is destroyed um, for some reason. You know, it'll be random. And you and all these real-time players move around on a graphical map made with, by graphics, I mean horrible text characters. But you actually can walk around and do things. And I, yeah, I'd done a lot of work on that. And um, why did I, and I even put advertisements for it into Lord to get it ready in one of my very rare PR kind of moves. But, yeah, why did I not, uh, why did I just quit that? I really can't remember. But uh, somewhere along the line I said, hey, I can use this engine to make Lord too." Maybe I realized that that's where um, people were asking, you know, why don't you make a Lord 2? Why don't you work on Lord? We don't care about planets, the exploration of space, your other door game. Lord is what we care about. Yeah. <laughs> The people, people are not shy uh, telling you what they want. And I, I think I probably said, eh, okay, I guess I won't, you know, I won't be an idiot. I'll do what people actually want. But I'm going to use the same engine and everything the same. I'm just going to skin it differently. So, yeah, that's what I did. And I think it, for those days, it was pretty ambitious. A real-time multiplayer visually walking around. And you could actually see other players moving around and step on them and give them an item or fight them. It did not do very well. It didn't come close to the popularity of Lord. Just it kind of because of Lord people would buy both together to get the discount, but I the emails I get today are only about Lord. No one says, "Oh, I really loved Lord 2, the sequel." No one says that. Well, there'll probably be some comment from somebody who watches this show. I hope so. If, <laughs> yeah, if you loved Lord 2, let me know. Let There's him someone. know. Let's, let's go back to that Planets game. So Planets, the exploration of space. Uh, that was a 98, right? So I was wondering, uh, what else, I guess besides the uh, Trade Wars, what else, uh, what kind of uh, other games in that genre had you played, the sort of space sim, space trading? Hmm. There was a Trade Wars clone or... 
or maybe Trade Wars cloned it. I'm trying to remember what it was called. Galactic uh, Overload. I don't know. Uh, I played that a little, but mostly Trade Wars. Can you play something like Starflight or Elite? Oh, oh uh, yeah. No, I was, I was Universe. Never, I was limiting myself to BBS games. Oh, oh you, okay. I, oh, if I can go beyond, yeah, of course. I played uh, Starflight on the Sega Genesis, and I didn't have it for PC. I don't know if I had a PC. I guess I did. And I loved PSI 5 Trading Company on the Commodore 64, which you have not looked at yet, I guess. Or, of course, you would have <laughs> covered it. It's a classic game. Uh so yeah, I was really into space games, and I, I took from all that, and I kind of said, "Hey, I want to make trade wars." Really, I wanted to make trade wars. You you want to emulate what you love, and I was an addict. So I said, uh, "How can I make trade wars?" But I'll I'll simplify some stuff. I don't. My programming is too crap to understand how they did those tunnel, a star like pathfinding through these virtual neural net things in space that trade wars does. So I did my own version much simpler, turn-based, landing on, you get a sequence of planets, a flight path, and then you figure out what to buy and sell with trading. So it, not as good as Trade Wars, but it, it did uh, capture some of the elements of Trade Wars, like uh, leaving messages to people, owning a planet, things like that. That's got to be satisfying to any kid's ego, owning a, owning a planet, right? Oh yeah, yeah, and owning your own cartel with other real players, you can have you can be the leader of like eight other players. So Lord never had a team system, but this game did. So in, in a few ways, it tried to move beyond Lord and add add a few new things. Well, there's a character in that game that was named after uh, one of the uh, one of the characters on Beverly Hills 90210, right? In, in Lord, no, in uh, Plants. Okay, uh, someone I, in NPC. I got my notes confused. Well, yeah. I was a I was a huge fan, um, embarrassingly, and I especially <laughs> yeah okay I had I had a crush on Jenny Garth. What I was a kid. Uh, you watch what's on the show. You know we didn't have a cable. It's, you just watch what you can watch, and. In Lord, I had an Easter egg that if you type the word Ginny in the forest, you could get free stuff. And that really was, that was the only true cheat that people uh, would talk about. Not a huge cheat, but it would say, tell me about Ginny Garth. And you could put in hot or ugly or whatever you wanted. And if you put ugly, you would die. And if you put hot, you would get something or... Uh, it really would uh, fill up your hit points or things like that. It's H O T or H A W T? Uh, I think it was H O T T. It had to be four letters because the input system. Um, so in, in planets, I don't know. I can't remember. You tell me. Did you did you see that somewhere? I forgot. Yeah, I want to say I saw that on the either the Wikipedia article about it or one of the other interviews. So. Was it like maybe Dil both? A different character, Dylan McKay or someone. Brandon Walsh is in pl uh, Planets. I think it was the Ginny. You know, I don't know. <laughs> okay, well, it might it might have been Lord that had the Ginny, but who knows? I throughout all my games, always I always put in references to whatever I'm currently into or watching. I that's the one thing about being a you know one one guy company. You can do that, so you might as well. Off this week's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I got my little buddy here, the ROUS uh, Rouse, a uh, rodent of unusual size, one of my uh, Christmas loots this year. Thought I would share him with you. He's going to be joining me here in the Matt Cave. A lot of fun. Also, I uh, hope that you had a happy Christmas and uh, looking forward to a very Merry New Year. Uh, 2014, let me know what you think. If you've got any uh, suggestions, advice, uh, guests you'd like to see here on Matt Chat, games you want me to review, remember you can always uh, post about it here or uh, go visit me at mattchat.us, uh, uh, where, by the way, you can also make a donation to support the show. If you do that, guys, you will have my eternal gratitude. Thank you very, very much to all who have donated. Now, what about that? Ale? Oh, oh, forgot. 
And there uh, is one thing else. I've uh, been thinking about getting a new microphone for my interviews. You probably noticed in this one, uh, sometimes my voice seems a little staticky. I've been using a, a rather cheesy little uh, lav mic for that. I want to upgrade to something. I don't really know what to get, though. I'm just kind of bewildered by the options. I know some of you guys have been doing this kind of stuff for longer than I have. Uh, so if you have advice or some kind of microphone that I can use to record those interviews, I really appreciate it. Uh, obviously, I don't have unlimited money, though, so keep a budget in mind with your recommendations. All right, what about that ale of the week? Uh, this week I've got a Lock Leach Monster Scottish Ale. This is from the Leech Lake Brewing Company. It's got a cool picture of uh, old Nessie there on the... Uh, on the bottle label. This is uh, these guys are out of Walker, Minnesota, which I don't think is too far away from me here in St. Cloud. Uh, they apparently used all kinds of hops in this: Golden Promise, Brown, Dextrin, Black Patent Malts, uh, Roasted Barley, something called Fuggle Hops, uh, which I'm excited about. Uh, let's see, 30 IBUs, uh, six percent alcohol. Uh, so not bad. Uh, shouldn't be bad at all, really. Anyway, let's get the Lotch Leech Monster open and see what it's all about. All right, so I've got some of this uh, Lock Leech Monster Ale here in the rather excellent drinking horn. I, I will caution you guys very strongly to be extremely careful when you pour this one. I was, you know, I'm, I'm not exactly new at this, but poured it too quickly and the foam just came shooting out of this thing like a fire extinguisher. Really wish I'd have had it on uh, the camera rolling. You guys would probably gotten a huge kick out of that. But anyway, suffice it to say, be careful with this. Anyway, let's uh, give it a whiff. Is that what, you, what is that? Uh, I guess you could sort of smell the hops in this, sort of a coffee-like uh, quality to it. Um, it is very dark, so I'm kind of expecting maybe a bit of a of a cherry-like taste to this, maybe some of that, uh, some, some bitterness to it. Anyway, let's see if I can, there's still quite a bit of a head in here, so let me see if I can work around that. Uh, quite a bit of uh, flavor there. You get for the taste of the, uh, I think they had maybe five or six different hops listed on that. Uh, definitely tells a very uh, sophisticated taste to it. Kind of a lot of nutty uh, flavors to this, a little bit of an almond flavor. Um, a little bit of bitterness, but not as much as I expected. Definitely taste some of that cherry, some of that sort of bourbon-like uh, flavor. <laughs> a little bit of a coffee-like uh, flavor to it. All in all, not bad. Uh, not bad. Let me give it a one more taste. <sighs> yeah, it's, it's good stuff. It's uh, very... Um, a complex flavor, you got a lot of this stuff going on here. Bit of coffee, bit of bitterness, kind of a cherry like bourbon sweetness to it. All in all, very, very nice. Uh, I guess I'll go maybe four out of five drinking horns on this. Um, it's, it's really, really good. I highly recommend it, um, especially if you're looking for something a little bit different. All right, so let's wrap this up with a quotation. I found a really good quotation. I'm really happy about this one. It comes from Neil Gaiman. And it goes something like this. Fairy tales are more than true, not because they tell us that dragons exist, but because they tell us that dragons can be beaten. See you guys next week. Good answer. Good answer. I like the way you think. I'm going to be watching you. A good teacher. He really seems to care about what I have no idea.